Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'd like to take a look at a problem that requires a very interesting use of Newton's second law. And in particular, we have an ad here that's claiming that there's a car being offered that can literally stop on a dime. And our job is to figure out, uh, is this advertisement uh, lying or not? So to do that, we are going to calculate the net force required to stop this 850 kilogram vehicle which is traveling initially at this rate and it's going to stop over the distance of the dime. Um, we're going to use the diameter here which is 1.8 centimeters. Uh, we have a lot of numbers thrown at us here so before we calculate anything I would recommend um, sorting uh, everything out and labeling everything appropriately. So let's call lowercase m the mass of the vehicle and we were told that was 850 kilograms. We have the initial velocity equal to 45.0 kilometers per hour and while that's fine and dandy we actually need our units to be in meters per second and we're going to manipulate the units a little bit in order to get that so that we can proceed. Uh, to do so um, let's put kilometers downstairs and meters upstairs so that the kilometers units will divide out. We know that um, there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. So the kilometers units have been converted appropriately. Let's finish up with the hours here. Uh, we want hours to be in the upstairs, the numerator, and we want seconds to be downstairs in the denominator because we want meter here per second there. And so um, if one hour is upstairs, how many seconds are downstairs? Well, there's 60 seconds in a minute, and there are 60 minutes in an hour. So 60 times 60 is 3,600. And we can cancel off hour here and cancel off hour here. So look at this. We have 45.0 times 1,000 divided by... Uh, 3,600 and our final units are meters per second. And what do, you, what do we get when we put this in the calculator? Well, I get, um, looks like 12 and a half meters per second. So we have the appropriate units here. We can move forward. What's the next piece of information that we were given? Well, the diameter of the dime. Let's just call that x. 1.8 centimeters. Uh, again, that's great to know that information, but we want meters, not centimeters. So what can we do to rectify that situation? Well, I want meters in upstairs, centimeters in downstairs. I know that in one meter, there is 100 centimeters. The centimeter units divide out and I end up getting what? I move, basically I move the decimal point over two. So one, two, which is equal to 0 0.018 meters. Okay, so they gave us the mass of the vehicle. They gave us how fast it was initially traveling. They gave us the distance over which it is stopping. We don't know anything about time, so any kind of kinematic equations that include, you know, like one half a t squared or like a v times t, throw them out. We can't even consider those. We don't know anything about them. So what other kind of kinematic formula can we use to figure out 
Uh, let's see, what useful piece of information do we actually need? Well, we're trying to figure out the net force or like the sum of the forces and that's going to be equal to mass times the net acceleration. Okay, So what we could do is we could use this information here with a kinematic formula that doesn't include time to get the net acceleration and then we could just plug it into this formula and then we'd be done. So here's the kinematic formula I would recommend using. Uh, it would be this one here. The final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the change in distance. Let's simplify this a little bit. We know that the uh, vehicle here is stopping on a dime so that means that the final velocity should be zero. So this whole left side turns into zero. We know what the initial velocity is. We kind of converted that appropriately to 12 and a half. So we got that. We're good there. We want to solve for the acceleration here. So, so far, so good. Okay. And we have a, a change in x. Are we in trouble? Well, no. What is change in x? Well, that's like a x final minus x initial. What is this? If we think about the length of the dime, the final, the x final, is the edge of the dime right here, and the x initial is the beginning of the dime right here that's just x. Same thing. So don't let this throw you off even though it's like a delta symbol. Um, we already have this quantity defined for us. Um, it's just that we're, we're starting at the beginning of the dime and ending at the edge of the dime. And that's all there is to it. So let's maybe rewrite this a little bit. I'll kind of partition this off. So we'll have uh, 0 is equal to uh, 12 and a half meters per second squared plus 2a times x, which is what? 0 0.018 meters. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to isolate uh, the acceleration here by moving this quantity over to the other side. So I'll have minus the quantity 12 and a half meters per second squared. Notice, even though this quantity is squared, we're making it negative because of this out here. That's equal to 2 times the acceleration of 0 0.018 meters. And now let's isolate for the acceleration that the car experiences as it's coming to a stop. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and this quantity here, 2 multiplied by that quantity. So negative 12.5 meter per second quantity squared divided by 2 times 0 0.018 meters. And this tells us that the acceleration that the car experiences as it's coming to a stop from you know this initial velocity is equal to <laughs> this incredibly gargantuan number 4340 uh, I get like 0.27 meter per second squared and now this isn't the final answer we're not solving for the acceleration so we don't have to we don't have to worry about like truncating this number or approximating or anything just yet we just have to plug this into Newton's second law. So what is that saying? The, the net force, the sum of all the forces, when we add them together, is equal to, uh, let's see, we said the mass was 850 kilograms <laughs> times negative 
4,340.27 meter per second squared. And what do you get when you plug this in? So my calculator said uh, basically I get 3.69. Um, you can either say uh, E or you can say um, keep the 9 there, times 10 to the 6, so times 10 to the 6, or E6, same thing. This would be Newtons, and it's in the negative direction because of that negative acceleration. So we're not even quite done yet because let's compare the significant figures in our final kind of like net um, force here versus the significant figures in the problem description. Here's three right here. Here's, uh, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't think this zero would be counted, so I would call this two. Uh, what's even easier, though, is there's two right here. So we would need to truncate our answer to two significant figures, which would be right about here. So the force experienced by the vehicle, the net force, as it's slowing down is equal to negative 3.7. Uh, I'll write it in the E notation this time. E to the 6 Newton. Okay, So this is experiencing a force to the left, right, to the left because of that negative sign there, of 3.7 times 10 to the 6 Newtons. Okay, And I'll kind of circle this as our answer. Um, is this reasonable? Can a car even really do this? Well, there's this really cool website that I've used a couple times called Wolfram Alpha where you can enter in a number and its units and it can tell you um, what these numbers might be like relative to other quantities that you're familiar with. So this is telling us that in order to slow this vehicle down on a dime from that initial velocity, the car needs to exert a force in the opposite direction, like 65 times the force of a bite from a Tyrannosaurus Rex, for example. Maybe that's not too easy to picture because I've never been around a Tyrannosaurus Rex and you probably haven't either so let's maybe think about um, something you have seen before or heard about before or or like been around before a Boeing 747 okay so this means that in a car to stop it in a dime going from that initial velocity it has to experience a force in the opposite direction 16 times the thrust that a single engine on a Boeing 747 has. Is it reasonable to expect that kind of horsepower, that kind of like thrust, um, to be more specific, um, in a vehicle? No. No, it's not. That's outrageously powerful. So here we can say the ad lied. <laughs> it's totally wrong. No way. No way that's possible. They're making it up. So. Uh, a very fun problem, a cool application of kinematics to the real world, um, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.